Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to... Well, I was going to say vampires then, and maybe werewolves, maybe the Pentex Guide to Werewolves. You know, it's been over a decade since I started the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires videos, and yes, this channel's waxed and waned in terms of productivity, but that is quite a benchmark, and the Pentex Guide to Werewolves that I recorded didn't come that much later than the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires. So this channel has been around for a while. It has been a constant source of lore. I say constant. Again, there's been several years of inactivity, more or less. But I decided I'd take a break from working on Curseborn. Curseborn, by the way, is Onyx Path Publishing's newest horror role-playing game. It's a return to horror RPGs. Now that Paradox no longer approve the pictures for Chronicles of Darkness books and uh, Onyx Path is getting through the last of our Mage the Ascension books, we have been working on Curseborn, which is our new urban horror RPG. And you can play in that vampire types, shapeshifters, sorcerers, the dead, outsiders, all kinds of things. And it's a really rich world. And I'm going to make a video on that separately. In fact, I didn't intend to go into this at all. I'll link the Kickstarter below because it isn't live yet, but you can get notified when it goes live. But if you like Onyx Paths content, if you liked our 20th anniversary content, Chronicles of Darkness content, or our work on 5th edition for World of Darkness, I think you will like Curseborn. It's a very new game, but I think you will like it. But I took a break from working on Curseborn because I've been doing a lot of Curseborn work recently. I'm one of the authors on it, and... I went back to the list of videos that I had made and lost. Uh, when people were backing the world below on Backer Kit, if they backed for a physical copy and sent me evidence of their backing that physical copy, I pledged to make a video for them. And this is one of those videos. And when I made this video before, I think I was filled with a lot more pith and vinegar, spite and vitriol than I am now. Let's see if I have tempered that a little. <laughs> Because you can see from the title that this is a review of Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th edition. And let me get this out the way. I don't do negative reviews. I never have. On this channel, everything has always been aimed at being upbeat. In this, uh, The reason it earned the name, at first it wasn't the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. It became the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming after one of my subscribers, I think it was Tetsubo57, said, Hello, Tetsubo, I know you're still out there, um, said to me, You're a real gentleman, or something like that. You should call this the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming. Because whenever I reviewed a game, I always tried to highlight the best points of it. The reason I do that isn't because I think every single role-playing game is a masterpiece. It's because, in my view, RPGs are entirely subjective. Whether an RPG is good or not very much depends on the players, the storyteller or GM or what have you. The story you're playing, the character you're playing, whether you have an arc, whether you're invested in the story, whether you have powers you like, your build, things like that. Yes, there is text on the page, but a game's quality is very much down to your experience, which is why there's some people out there who will say they love GURPS and some people who will say they hate GURPS. I'm perfectly fine with GURPS because I can tell whatever story I like with GURPS. But there are other people who look at it purely from a mechanical perspective and say isn't for me. That's a bad game. And I disagree fundamentally with the idea of any game at its core being bad, unless it delivers some kind of hateful message, or I guess is put together so poorly that you just can't play a game from its pages. Now that's a different question entirely, and that is not Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition. I mentioned I initially came at this video with a certain amount of spite, and that's because I had worked on Werewolf 5th Edition. Myself, a whole team of authors, we worked for Hunter's Entertainment on Werewolf 5th Edition before the current iteration of Werewolf 5th Edition came out. And we had several meetings, and if I'm quite honest, several meetings that went nowhere, lots of spinning of wheels, and uh, we, some of us wrote our drafts, some of us didn't. Some of the best writers on that book, I will name, I will call out by name, James Sambrano, a fantastic author, came up with some brilliant ideas that the entire team was behind uh, as concerns the Native Americans and First Nation tribes 
uh, that were presented in Werewolf the Apocalypse. You will know them already, um, and I will give them the names of Elder, Middle, and Younger Brother for the sake of argument, because certain names that were used in classic Werewolf the Apocalypse are no longer used today for cultural sensitivity reasons, which is a perfectly valid reason not to use a word anymore. And James came up with some brilliant ideas uh, for how to re-engineer these tribes. And we, a lot of the members of the team, did the same thing with tribes that were based elsewhere in the world. There was still the intention back then, and I'm not going to go too deep into this because I, I am, I guess, under NDA, so I'm not going to be able to give detail. But the idea of not distancing oneself from culture, the idea of treating culture in a sensitive and mature way, that's a word I always like to lean on because I think a lot of people get frightened by the word sensitivity. They think, oh, sensitive, that means soft, that means woke, I can't play that. Mature is, I think, a nice balance. Sometimes you've got to tailor the message to the audience, you know? And... We wanted to look at certain tribes from a cultural perspective without being culturally stereotypical, which was a certain trap that previous Werewolf the Apocalypse editions had fallen into. See the Fianna and their drinking problem uh, as one example, one fairly egregious example. There were certain ideas thrown around, like bringing, I believe, in the core book, we wanted to uh, present the Get of Fenris as playable. We also wanted to, well, because there was no idea behind pulling them out at that point. I know there was a directive to pull them out, but we came up with a pretty good idea for keeping them in, in my view. And uh, also bringing back one of the Lost Tribes, uh, because... The entire idea we had was, yes, it's post-apocalyptic. Yes, the worm has won, which is more or less carried over into the fifth edition that you can read now. But in the in Gaia's desperation, in her last convulsion, one of the lost tribes is reborn. It becomes a game of desperate struggle. There's panic, there's frustration because the war is lost, but there's hope because you've got everything to fight for now and nothing to lose. And so we came up with lots of fun ideas, as I say. And sadly, uh, although again, tastes may differ, our game was rejected. It was not what Paradox wanted. And ultimately, Paradox took the game back in-house and they made it with their own team. And that is completely their prerogative. All fairness to them. It's their license. You do what you want, Paradox. I have nothing against that. So, we had this situation. Uh, I can't by any means say I was cheated out of anything. You know, I've worked on so many games at this point, especially video games that get cancelled before release. As long as I get paid, I can't see it as a loss. It's always frustrating to pour creativity into a project and then never see it reach the light of day. But at the same time, there are certain realities, both in tabletop and video games, uh, even World of Darkness video games I've worked on as a writer, that have just been cancelled before they've even been announced. But usually they pay well enough to make it worth my while. And this was one of those cases. So I wasn't bitter about it being cancelled. What I was bitter about was the fact that uh, I understand um, James certainly noticed, uh, pointed out that certain of his content that he had written for our initial uh, version of the game appeared in the 5th edition that got released. I can't attest that, but I believe it if James says it. Uh, I uh, And James, I think it was James, said you should really check it to see if any of your work ended up in there because I had written a fair amount. And I was, I think, burned enough that I... Or burned out enough is probably a better way to put it. Uh, because it, it wasn't like I hated Werewolf. It was just I had spent time in those trenches. I'd worked on it through 20th Anniversary Edition. I had been developing the Apocalyptic Record as well, which is somewhere back there. And that took a lot of work. So when I was told you should check to see if any of your work is in there, because none of us are credited. None of the original authors are credited. I thought... Uh, fuck it. Well, I can't be bothered. I, I really don't care. Uh, for myself, you know, I, I care if other people are upset, but for me, this this isn't my fight. I've got other books to work on. 
and I appreciate that's a po- that's a position of privilege for me uh, that I often have work lined up. Uh, it's part organisation, part privilege, but I appreciate I'm in the position where I can do that, so I don't have to care as much. But it did get under my skin a little, especially because the Vampire 5th Edition Player's Guide came out around that time. And one of the writers or the developer of that book got in touch with me. I won't name them because they haven't asked to be named or anything like that or ever discussed it with me uh, to speak of it publicly. Asked me, who wrote this part of Chicago by Night and who wrote these parts of Cults of the Blood Gods? And I was able to say, Malcolm Shepard, Jacqueline Brick, myself. Because it was material around the La Sombra, Oblivion, uh, the Hecata, I think and cults, uh, is in the formation of cults, and it was Malcolm, Jax, and myself, because the intention was to credit us in the Player's Guide, because they were repurposing our text in the V5 Player's Guide. So we were asked, I was asked, give those names over, and then they released the book, and our names weren't in it. And I ended up querying with that author, I said, why didn't our names end up in it? Did there was there a breakdown in communication, and was told, more or less, that Renegade don't want to credit you. So I've, I've no bad bones with Renegade, and I would have no idea why Renegade would have any bad bones with me. Certainly not Paradox, because I've worked on other World of Darkness properties, and so far as I know, Paradox have never intervened to say Matthew Dawkins should not be employed or should not be credited. But, for whatever reason, Renegade didn't want to credit us, my suspicion, my suspicion is they were trying to cut off as many references to what the Onyx Path books as possible because they wanted people buying the Renegade books instead, which now all of them effectively are because they've been rebranded and rewritten in some cases. But that did stick in my craw, and so it made me more reticent to engage in Werewolf 5th Edition because what if I saw my text in there and I got upset and I, I didn't want to make a video like that? And then there was more. On top of it, there was all the talk of the art that was in Werewolf 5th Edition. And this is where I started reading into it eventually. A year or so later, I started looking at the core rulebook for the first time, and I was able to see the art that upset so many people. I don't care all that much about traced art from a public source or, you know, uh, public domain art or stock images. That That's kind of why they're there, uh, and plenty of artists trace images, uh, plenty trace images, but obviously there was Im- there were images that weren't public domain that were traced for the s- and altered slightly for the sake of this book, and they were easily found. I have no doubt there's a lot of RPGs out there that have got the same issue, but there are fans of the World of Darkness who are very, very scrutinous, if that's a word, and are looking for these things, so they got caught out. And so I was coming at Well 5th Edition, and I mean, I'm 13 minutes into this video, and it's all fairly negative right now, and that is not my intention. Um, but they were coming at Werewolf with a certain amount of vitriol. They were looking for the flaws instead of the good points, and I could have counted myself among them. So I took my time. I, I recorded my video back then, and I wasn't happy with it, and in the end, luckily, I never uploaded it which has given me the opportunity to revisit Werewolf 5th Edition, and now come to you uh, at at this moment, several years on uh, from its release, to give you my thoughts on Werewolf 5th Edition. It's (laughs) alright. It's okay. It's fine. It's a game, and it's written. No, no, that sounds far too hollow. It is well written, in parts. Uh, I enjoyed write- reading through Well 5th Edition. I enjoyed how it had moved with the times, because uh, the central conflict in the original Well for the Apocalypse editions was always about the environment. This one gets more into things like social justice, and don't come at me to say woke has ruined World of Darkness. Werewolf has always been woke the most woke of all of them and hell, playing as Anarchs, punching up against the Camarilla, or indeed any of our uh, counterculture clans, tribes, traditions, or the like have been woke. Certainly the team behind it were woke before that was a word being thrown around. I know it upsets people to hear that, but it is true. 
and I am very, very happy that Well 5th Edition has moved with that time. It isn't just looking at environmental destruction, it is looking more broadly. Now, this has always been the case. You know, you've always had male gin in Karna, you've got worm spirits that are attached to things like hate, bigotry, greed, lust, and things like that. But now you're able to see the game through a modern lens, and I think that's a good thing. I also think that the rules are perfectly, perfectly solid. Uh, I have no issue with them whatsoever. I like how they follow the V5 trend, uh, replacing essentially hunger with rage, you know, with some alterations. Uh, not a big fan of the dice colour scheme, but you know, that's a minor thing entirely. I can use my own dice. Um... But I thought the the way they handled it gives me hope for how, if they ever make Mage 5th Edition, they would handle things like Paradox, as an example. The effect, not the company. I was, at first, apathetic about how the tribes were presented, because I'm coming at Werewolf from a position of many, many years of investment and lore. I am an established fan, an old-school fan, if you like, but I'm not, I don't like to consider myself a grognard because I'm not evangelical about the way things have to be. Far from it. I love that games change. I think that's the whole point of new editions. If a game doesn't change with its newest edition, you might as well not have released a new edition. So, I appreciate the Wellfifth Edition has presented the tribes archetypally, rather than bogging them down too heavily in the meta plot. At first, as I say, I was apathetic, because I want to see hooks. I want to see content that pulls me into the game, that makes me think, I want to play one of these. But none of them were presented in a way that gave me anything new, nothing to sink my teeth into. But what I can appreciate is a new player or new storyteller would look at that material and say, okay, these, those are some broad strokes. I can get on board with them. Those are really appealing to me. If, you, if you've never played Werewolf before, 5th edition, I think, is an excellent way to get into it. It has the bare bones of what you need. It's a slim book, all told, and it gives you what you need. It has the same issue to me as a book that I also love, V20 Dark Ages. For me, someone who has been reading vampire lore for decades, the idea of a two-page splat summarising a clan and then having no further lore about it, it leaves me utterly empty, especially when some of the writing quality is up and down. Uh, but And well, 5th Edition suffers the same issue. But is it really suffering if it's just me? I know it isn't just me. I am representative of an entire catchment of role player. But I've got to look at this as a toolbox. I've got to look at it as, is it actually bad? And just because it doesn't appeal to me doesn't mean it doesn't appeal to someone else. So I think it's perfectly decently written, the tribes, the way they are presented. But it doesn't give me enough. So I'm okay with it, because I already have that information in my previous editions of Werewolf. That's the thing. I think a lot of people, when they complain about where's all the lore gone, often those are people who already know about the lore, so do you need it repeated? No. It would be nice to see it evolve. It would nice to see be nice to see it expand. Clearly, Paradox's intention is not to have those expansions in the core book. This is your entryway into the game. You need to get your head around that in order to like it. Now, there are, of course, more issues. Uh, the Get of Fenris are not playable. Now, I know there's a lot of people who really tie their identity to clans and tribes, traditions, uh, less so guilds, uh, but the Fenrir were always very popular. They are now Chad antagonists. <laughs> And I can see how that has upset a lot of people. It's not a decision I would have made, much the same as I would have made the Sabat playable from the off rather than wait for a Storyteller's Vault product to allow it. But I, I, I can appreciate what they were going for. I think the issue for me is I think they could have found a way of making the Get of Fenris more interesting than just rage, punch, slash, tear, 
almost a white supremacist. As, and I remember when we were working on fifth edition with Hunters Entertainment, we were told that they wanted to lean more into that whole... Um, I can't even remember the name of the camp that got destroyed of the Geta Fenris who were white supremacists, but I know they wanted to lean more into that. And we came back and said, well, they were destroyed in, I think, second edition or revised edition, so why would they be back now? And that's the direction they've gone again. And, yeah, don't like that. Don't like that. I don't... I, I think any one of us can acknowledge that there are real-world bigots and fascists but making a popular playable option default to that seems like a just not a move uh, I would have made but I get it I get why you did because it's also shocking if you look at this from a removed perspective again if you come in at this new and you just hear this story it's it's difficult to understand the fall of the White Howl as the Croatan and the Bunyip because they were so long ago. If a tribe only just fell to one of modern day's most hateful quagmires, you know, fascism, then I think that is relatable. It's scary. It's something for you to fight against that, again, you can relate to. So I, again, I get it. I probably wouldn't have done it, but I appreciate what was being aimed at there, if that's not too much a bundle of uh, words. The game itself, looking at the whole thing, uh, with all your gifts, with the far, 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 far remove of the Umbra from the game at this point, uh, with the far, far, far removal of Pentex from the front, uh, and... Indeed, you can look at a great deal of Wealth 5th Edition and say this is Wealth stripped down to the bone. What I come away with after reading Wealth 5th Edition is feeling like this isn't a game for me. But that's okay. Because it's a game for someone else. And that's a message I think I need to work on in my head. It's something I've always been happy saying with reviews, but it's something I need to understand, get used to as a writer, as a fan. Because, yeah, Werewolf 5th Edition isn't my edition of Werewolf, but it will be someone else's, and they're going to have great stories to tell with it. Do I think the development of the book and the some of the concepts in it, uh, some of the ideas that are carried through in it are flawed? Do I think some of the writing in it is not, I guess, up to the standard I would like? Uh, do I think that there is a little too much time given over to glibness and not enough to anger? It is a game of rage after all. Yeah. I think all of those criticisms, and I think all of those criticisms are valid. Uh, because that is a question of my tastes, bouncing off of what's being presented in Werewolf 5th Edition. However, do I think this is a game where the system is simple enough that new gamers could get into it? Do I think where the message is clear enough that new gamers could get into it? Do I think the playable options are vast enough that there are a lot of them? And with all the usual permutations of auspice and tribe, do I think the way you can build your characters, do I think the world you can inhabit is painted clearly enough? I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence about that painting because I think the core book is a little too muddy. I think the broad strokes bleed into each other a little too much. And with that, you are presented with a toolbox, but not one that serves you exactly the tool you need. You've got to rummage around in there to find the right tool. But to go back to the gifts, to go back to the playable options, to go back to uh, your, your basics of character and pack creation, could I run a story from this book alone? I could. How much of that is born from the fact that I already know Werewolf the Apocalypse, in and out? I don't know. It'd be impossible for me to say. I feel like there is enough there. And I feel that the story that you'd tell, or I would tell from that, if I had no knowledge of Werewolf prior to 5th edition, would be a very different story to the kind of Werewolf Chronicles I ran way back when. 
And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. It's interesting coming at an RPG that I've worked on, got cancelled, got republished by someone else. It's interesting in looking at an RPG that I have got emotional investment in because I've worked on so many books for Werewolf the Apocalypse. And, of course, I've made videos about about Pentex and, and Tribes and so on. It's interesting. I've worked on the board game Retaliation, so I'm not completely divorced from Werewolf the Apocalypse at all. It's interesting coming in at it with time to reflect. Time to get over any residual bitterness uh, and just look at it. It's impossible to look at it objectively, I think. But I can at least look at it through the eyes of a fan of role-playing games. Not even a fan of werewolf, but a fan of role-playing games. And I can say, is it playable? Is there good material in here? The answer to both of those things is Yes. Is it for me? Is the material to my tastes? The answer to that is no. And that's fine. That is absolutely fine. So, have I played Werewolf 5th Edition? No. Have I ran Werewolf 5th Edition? No. Am I likely to? No. That's three big no's. And that's no fault of Werewolf itself. It's no fault of Paradox. It's no fault of Hunter's Entertainment. It's no fault of mine. It just means I already have my werewolf game. And it's Curseborn, because I created the Get of Lyca <laughs> for Curseborn. Curseborn has shapeshifters. It has the primal lineage in it. We have in that the uh, the Lycans. Those are our werewolves. We've got Sphinx, our werecats. We've got the Eight Hands, our were spiders. We have our Spawn of Vodnik. Which are, are our deep one like frog shifters, if you like. Uh, we have our hides, who are our, well, I like to consider, compare them to like the leader or the hulk. Uh, although obviously Jekyll and Hyde are a very uh, strong comparison. We have our raptors, which are our reptilian bird like shifters, our chimera, if you will. So. I've worked on the shapeshifter game I want to, and you can find out more about that by clicking the link below and wait, or waiting for my video on Curseborn when it comes out. But that's fine, because there are going to be other people who like Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition, and there are plenty of games around, there's plenty of gaming groups. There's no need for us to ho-ho, be tribal. You can play the game you want, and then when you run out of stories or you get to a natural conclusion, you can switch to the other one. You don't have to plant your flag. For the longest time, I think I did that with the World of Darkness. I was known as a World of Darkness guy. And I think a lot of people signed up to my Patreon specifically to play World of Darkness games and have left sorely disappointed because I run a lot of things that aren't World of Darkness as well. Uh, or instead of. Uh, right now, there's two va two separate Vampire the Requiem games going. There is a Changing the Lost game going. So those are all Chronicles of Darkness. We've got two separate Slay Industries games going. We've got a two Pendragon games going as well. Uh, we've got They Came From Camp Murder Lake game uh, going. So I've got lots of games on the run. And none of them, none of them, are World of Darkness right now. Because it's good to have lots of strings on your bow, arrows in your quiver, mix them up as you will. And I would recommend Werewolf the Apocalypse 5th Edition to anyone who is brand new to the World of Darkness and wants to get in at the ground floor on a werewolf game that isn't bogged down with all the lore that a lot of us love. But let these players find their own way into werewolf, starting with that book. And if it isn't for them, hell, don't even try. Give Curseborn a go, because that is a very real alternative that is coming to Kickstarter in October. With all that said, this has been the longest video of mine in quite a while. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be back again soon.